Wait for the Lord, be strong, be stout-hearted, and wait for the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today is Tuesday, March 23rd, Tuesday in the fifth week of Lent. Mass this morning is offered for the repose of the soul of Ed Blue. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, perseverance in obeying your will, that in our days the people dedicated to your service may grow in both merit and number. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount Hor, the children of Israel set out on the Red Sea Road to bypass the land of Edom. But with their patience worn out by the journey, the people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up from Egypt to die in this desert, where there is no food or water? We are disgusted with this wretched food. In punishment, the Lord sent among the people seraph serpents which bit the people, so that many of them died. Then the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned in complaining against the Lord and you. Pray the Lord to take the serpents away from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a seraph and mount it on a pole, and whoever looks at it after being bitten will live. Moses accordingly made a bronze serpent and mounted it on a pole. And whenever anyone who had been bitten by a serpent looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. The word of the Lord. Thanks. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. Hide not your face from me in the day of the distress. Incline your ear to me. In the day when I call, answer me speedily. O oh Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. The nations shall revere your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. When the Lord has rebuilt Zion, and what appeared in his glory. When he has regarded the prayer of the destitute, and not despised their prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Let this be written for the generation to come, and let his future creatures praise the Lord. The Lord looked down from his holy height, from heaven he beheld the earth, to hear the groaning of the prisoners, to release those doomed to die. O oh Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. The seed is the word of God. Christ is the sower. All who come to him will live forever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am going away and you will look for me, but you will die in your sin. 
Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, He is not going to kill himself, is he? Because he said, Where I am going, you cannot come. He said to them, You belong to what is below. I belong to what is above. You belong to this world, but I do not belong to this world. That is why I told you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, What I told you from the beginning, I have much to say about you in condemnation, but the one who sent me is true, and what I heard from him I tell the world. They did not realize that he was speaking to them of the Father. So Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am, and that I do nothing on my own, but I say only what the Father taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, because I always do what is pleasing to him. Because he spoke this way, many came to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up from Egypt to die in this desert where there is no food or water? We are disgusted with this wretched food. After the people suffered from the punishment God sent them, they repented of those words. They said, we have sinned in complaining against the Lord and you. Pray the Lord to take the serpents away from us. Here we have a recurring theme that happens throughout the Bible and for that matter in our current world. The people sin against God, for all sin is against God. Then they repent and are saved for a time. This is what we often do as people after complaining about our current state. And then when we face a crisis, we come to some some sort of repentance. But what kind of repentance is it usually? A repentance where we are sorry for the pain we are suffering. Recall the act of contrition where we say, Oh my God, I am heartily sorry for having offended you and I detest all my sins because I dread the loss of heaven and the pains of hell, but most of all because they offend you, my God, who are all good and deserving of my love. The Catechism says, For a person to receive forgiveness in the confessional, he or she must have contrition for sins. Contrition is the sorrow of the soul and detestation for sin committed, together with the resolution not to sin again. Contrition may be of two kinds, perfect and imperfect. Perfect contrition arises from the love by which God is loved above all else. Imperfect is born of the consideration of sin's ugliness or the fear of eternal damnation and the other penalties threatening the sinner. In the case of perfect contrition, the motive is love of God, whereas for imperfect, it is the fear of punishment. In other words, we may fear hell more than we love God. This is imperfect contrition. Outside the confessional, imperfect contrition does not forgive mortal sins. Such a person remains separated from God. Recall that the people asked Moses to pray to take the serpents away from them. He was God's representative, as is the priest in the confessional today. In a way, we ask the priest, in the person of Christ, to take the serpents of sin away from us. We also heard, Hide not your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me in the day when I call. Answer me speedily. The Lord looked down from his holy height. From heaven he beheld the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoners, to release those doomed to die. Our Lord gave us the remedy that can save us from our sins. 
as he gave the Israelites the remedy that saved them from the serpents. Would any of them in their right mind refuse to be saved when bitten? Would a prisoner refuse release? Would Moses or Aaron have refused to tell the people about the bronze serpent? Keep these questions in mind as we further unpack this. At a parish that I belonged to some years ago, I was leading a small group of parishioners at a larger gathering there. We had split off to reflect on some topic and, and found that the room we were assigned to had been occupied. I knew that there would be one room open for sure, so I told my group to meet me in the reconciliation room while I went to grab some folding chairs. This was a good sized room for a small group. It only lacked seating. I brought the chairs back to the reconciliation room only to find my group nowhere to be seen. So I set them up and went looking for them. When I found them, they said, we didn't know where the reconciliation room was. I was a bit surprised as the door for this is actually just inside the church and close to the entrance. With, with a fairly large sign that says reconciliation room. The people cannot be faulted, however, for this all-important sacrament was not fostered by the priest. It was made available only on Saturdays for a half hour after, ma after the vigil mass. So their culpability was negated. I mentioned this to note that imperfect contrition, while not as good as perfect contrition, is soul-saving. To refuse contrition leads to self-condemnation. As we heard Jesus say today, he told the Pharisees, I'm going away and you will look for me, but you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. He said to them, you belong to what is below, I belong to what is above. You belong to this world, but I do not belong to this world. That is why I told you that you will die in your sins. I have much to say about you in condemnation. These are very harsh words aimed at those who do not have a contrite heart. The Pharisees were self-condemned and our Lord was very direct in pointing this out to them. He was in front of them, staring them in the eyes. Their remedy was available, but they refused and they died in their sin. There is nothing no touching story you might read on the internet, no moving life experience involving death that is as sad as what befalls the Pharisees here. Do you think that any of the people who were bitten refused to gaze at the bronze serpent on the pole? Of course not. They valued life. Likewise, we can gaze at our Lord on the cross. With this, pan with this pandemic, we have kind of been in an extended Lent. It started a year ago and now we have what may or may not be a cure. With viruses and vaccines, you can never be sure. We rejoice what might possibly save the body, but how about what will absolutely save the soul? If you haven't gone to confession, I beg you to gaze at the one who was mounted on the pole then seek the vaccine that is 100% effective, the sacrament of confession. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, that being moved to compassion, you may both pardon our offenses and direct our wavering hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross your judgment on the world is now revealed in the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, we proclaim in your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come out. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and Andrew, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer an appropriate sign of peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all to myself, says the Lord. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that ever seeking what is divine, we may always be worthy to approach these heavenly gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. O oh God, who choose to show mercy, not anger, to those who hope in you. Grant that your faithful may weep as they should for the evil they have done, and so merit the grace of your consolation.
through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Saint Joseph, Saint Paul, praise be Jesus Christ.